in a very powerful way. And I realize that I'm sitting amongst mothers who bore children since abortion became legal in our country. You had a choice. You had a choice to, to lay down your life for nine whole months of pregnancy. And you chose life. You chose to lay it down. But this mother also told me of how there are so many times throughout that child's life that you will choose to lay your own life down. And to, to be the person that that child can count on. Even when it's inconvenient, even when it's painful, even when it's hard. Will you choose to lay down? And number 10. Psalm 139, 14 through 16. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. Number 10 is always hope. I had a dear mother share a very vulnerable moment. She said how she had already had several children. And then she got the word that there was enough on her mother. And she was disappointed. In fact, she was even a little, a little angry. What am I supposed to do? How am I going to handle this? And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, she was able to talk to some other moms. And she was able to uh, find a time when she could hear the Lord. And he said, you know, always hope. Always hope because there's a purpose for that life that's inside of you. And as that mom had that child, and as she watched that child grow, she was able to see the purpose that God had for that child. And she came to realize there's a purpose for every child that He calls into this world. But to hold on to that hope is something we need to do. My friends, this morning, I'm aware that not everyone here is a mom or will be a mom. And I'm hoping that there was some direct application for those who are and may be. But everyone here has a mother. Has a mother. And my hope is that as we went down through these 10 one second sermons, that maybe there was something in there that you thought, yeah, that's my mom. She did that. My hope is this morning you would praise the Lord for that mom. I had one mother write something for me that I really felt I needed to share verbatim. And it's what I will use to close our study. Sometimes I wonder why God didn't create angels to perform the awesome role of motherhood instead of imperfect mortals who sometimes grow tired and frustrated, impatient, grouchy, or even worse. Yet it pleased him to partner with us. Indeed, he created us for the very purpose and privilege of motherhood. Trust in me with all your heart, he says, and lean not on to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your paths. I will help you See beyond the muddy footprints on the freshly mopped kitchen floor. The cranky, fevered child demanding your attention. The smart-mouthed teen challenging your authority. I have 
partnered with you to love, to restore, to discipline, and to nurture. As an earthly mother, I can only respond in humble gratitude. What a privilege. What a joy. To partner with God in creation and guiding of so many young lives. Let's pray. Oh God, you have been so good to us. And we thank you now, Father, for mothers that we have had. We thank you for their imperfections. We thank you for the way they lived for you. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to be a blessing to our mothers. For those who still live here, Lord, we ask that you would give us the strength, the courage, the time, and the patience to go to them and to thank them and to bless them. And for those who have gone home to be with you, we ask that you would help us to remember the good that was in our mothers and help us to live for you and be a glorification Lord, of your presence and help us to remember our mothers. We ask this all in Jesus' name.